Welcome back to Wager Talk TV. We're going to preview the Cleveland Browns and the Oakland Raiders. Who else could we have on the panel to cover the Browns game the week after their first win but Brian Leonard and Ralph Michaels? Guys, congratulations. You finally got a win in Cleveland. They opened up all those was it, Bud Light uh, lockers for people to have their free beer in Cleveland. I was on the strip with this guy Thursday night. He was rocking the uh, brown shirt. And I got to tell you, first time ever that I've ever hung out with Brian, that he was treated like a rock star on the Vegas Strip Thursday night. It's good to be a Browns fan. Yeah, <laughs> it was like it, people coming up, both male and female, high-fiving, you know, and congratulating. And I don't know if I believe that. Well, they, yeah. well there, there was more men than women, okay. but there was. But congratulations. And, Ralph, do you know where – I said, we'll go wherever you want to go to celebrate the Browns win. Yeah, you know, White Castle. I was like – You know, I've been doing this for 35 years. <laughs> Rarely get recognized. I wear a Browns jersey when the Browns win. Mm. Everybody loves me. Yeah. That's because they don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. And All this right. is the guy, my fellow Clevelander right here. Well, we wasted a minute of the video if anybody's still watching after that intro. But, you know, I had to give you guys your props for the Browns. Guys, do they make it two in a row? Oakland, this is a team that, uh, you know, if you want to be 6-0 and with Oakland after the first three weeks, it's simple. You bet Oakland first half. You go against them second half, you're six and zero. Oh. This, this team does not play the second half. Is it coaching? Is it conditioning? What's going on in the second half? I'll start with you, Ro. Well, you know, Oakland's played the number one strength of schedule, or depending on who you look at, a top schedule. So you could say you played the toughest schedule, and at the half, the halftime, you've had the lead in all three games. That's pretty good. Yes, you got to learn to close it out. I think there's some more issues there. Now they're talking about perhaps moving to San Diego next year. They know their fan base isn't going to follow them. And there's some internal strife in that whole organization. Now, I, I liked the Browns last week, but I told my clients – I couldn't use them because they hadn't won a game. I'm not going to back them as a favorite. I, I like them in the role, but I don't think you should back them in that role. This is the exact same scenario. The last time they won a non-AFC North Road game was October of 2014. That's four years ago, the last time they won a road game. So now you're asking them to go across country, playing a team that's you know better than them as far as power ratings go at the beginning of the year. And the game was basically a pick -em. Now they're a few point dogs. I got a couple uh, stats after Brian. Brian, you look at it. We had the uh, coming out party of Baker Mayfield. And when we were sitting watching the game, in that one hit that um, Tyrod Taylor took, I joked to you. I said, they're going to send him to the tent. I, I'm telling you, this is how this is going to play out. They're going to send him to the tent. They're going to ask him, what's two plus two? He's going to say four. And they're going to say, no, what's two plus two? <laughs> four. No, that's not right. And they're going to say he has a concussion. And that's going to be the excuse to, to bring Baker Mayfield in. And sure enough, it was their opportunity to do it. And then he gets the drive right before the, the end of the half. I think they got the field goal field. there. But it was, it was the momentum and the excitement. You could see it coming in. If you want to talk about in-game wagering, and that's what we always talk about, see the momentum, the ebb and flow of the games, you saw the, the difference as soon as he took the field. You're yeah. always one that talks yeah. about scoring right before the was, half. We were yeah. sitting there with Buster, one of the other yeah. handicappers, watching the game. Having and, drinks. And what, imagine yeah, that. Major drinks. <laughs> and uh, it, the second half came out, and it was plus seven and a half. I said, oh, my God. I said, they're doing this on math. They didn't watch the end of that first half because you could just tell the Browns players were so excited but the problem is now that everybody's excited, the betters are excited, and now they've got film on him, and they know he's going to be the starting quarterback, right. which the Jets did not expect him to be in the game. Uh, totally different situation. You take a look at the Browns, it, from, from a, just a, a turnover standpoint, there's no way you want the Browns here. The Browns have played three games, they're plus nine in turnovers. Raiders have played three games, they're minus four in, 13 turnover differential already after three games. Uh, the Raiders actually, when you take a look at their successful plays offensively, 56%, which is tremendous. That's up there where the Rams are. Problem is, they're not getting in the end zone. They move the ball between the 20s. Uh, so we don't know if that's going to continue or not. Atlanta's had that problem last year. They moved the ball all over the place. They couldn't put it in. Uh, the Browns have had 21 explosive plays, only allowed 15. So even with Tyrod Taylor, they've had the big plays. They just couldn't get consistency out of it. Ralph, uh, when we have seen success from Oakland has been 
either when they're beginning of the game and they have the scripted plays or when they've gone with hurry up offense, they've had more success. The problem with using the hurry up and everybody goes, well, just use the hurry up all the time. They can't with that defense because if you go hurry up on offense, what happens is it puts your defense on the field for more defensive plays as well. And this defense is not good. They get no pass rush. Oh, I wonder why. And the secondary is just a shambles. Well, you know, they say the better coaching staff wins the second half because they make halftime adjustments. I mean, that's been Oakland. I mean, we don't know how good of a coach Gruden is, but obviously he's gotten out coached the second half in three straight games. So, you know, that's just a point to move forward. And to Brian's point, you know, yards per game, yards per game diff in the NFL. Cleveland's number 19, so below the 500 line. Oakland's number 11. Points per game diff, the big, the big difference, they're number 30. So mm -hmm. Oakland, again, has moved the ball almost to a top 10 pace. You know, and again, a couple points here to point out. You would think that being on Thursday night off a win like Cleveland is with the extra rest, it's a benefit. But teams that win on Thursday night and then travel and the lines between the three, so you're playing a team that is of your same caliber, only 5 and 16 ATS since 2000. So, you know, that's a very negative number. And, you know, you look on the opposite side, that's a reason to fade the Browns. Another reason to fade Oakland, 0 and 3 home favorites since 1989 are 6 and 17 against the spread. Again, you know, why would you be a home favorite if you're 0 and 3 and you have, you know, you're basically out of the playoffs. We know that teams that start 0 and 3 have a what percent shot. So, again, this is a situation where, I find reasons to fade both teams. I think Cleveland's the better team. I think Cleveland will win, but until they learn to win on the road, I just can't back them. When this was two and a half, two, two and a half, this was definitely a teaser candidate because you got a total that's at 45, but we're starting to see this creep to three. There are actually are some threes out there already. So at three, it's not a teaser value that you would have at, at the two and a half. Yeah, they, I think it started, I think they opened it at three and then it went down to two, two, two and a half. And so it's been bouncing. But yeah, if you can get it at two, two and a half and uh, it's a nice, because the total's not overly high. No, 45, in today's NFL, yeah, 45, right. you know, 10 years ago, 45 was a high total. Right. Now it's not. And the Browns defense is playing very good, but they played good last year. They just were on the field so much because of turnovers and short fields that they just weren't good on the numbers. All right, good stuff, guys. Hey, don't forget, each and every Monday, get daily picks for just $9. We do it every Monday, including 5% best bets. Remember, those 5% plays sell for $30 normally. You can get it for just $9 every Monday at WagerTalk.com. We'll be back with more.